Hey everyone, Kirsten here. Today I'm going to be showing you how I scan my artwork and digitize it. I am just using an Epson V600 scanner here. I will have more details on all of the equipment and software that I use in the description box below. And I'm just prepping the scanner, cleaning the glass, and then I will show you how I scan it in on the computer. Okay, so just opening up the Epson scan tool in your computer. Um, lots of these settings were already set when I got the um, this software downloaded. I don't think I've ever changed um, these, but just to go through, I have it on professional mode. Um, and then for the document type, it's reflective. The document source is the document table. Auto exposure type, I may have changed that one. Just make sure it's on photo. And the image type is 24-bit color. Um, I don't think I changed that one either. The DPI, so with the resolution, obviously the higher resolution you go, the better the quality will be, but it also um, makes the file size itself larger. And I found that it was just unnecessary to go any higher than 300 DPI, so that's where I'm sitting. And I think this is pretty standard for scanning artwork and with everything I've um, researched and read, um, 300 is um, kind of a standard resolution to go with and then I also just have this dust removal on I know I wiped down the glass before but it just will ensure that any of the particles remaining are removed in the scan so the next thing I'm going to do is preview the scan itself so when I'm previewing it as you saw in the video clip before I just lightly press my hand down on the top of the scanner and then at this point I the marquee tool um, this cross right here. I believe that automatically opens up on this software But all you're gonna do is kind of grab it as a crop and Go around the area that you'd like to scan. So I always try to go as close to the image edges as possible because The least amount of background we have the less we have to edit out when we go to open it up in Photoshop so basically what we're gonna end up doing is taking the background out of this artwork completely and you're just gonna have the image itself. So we don't really need all this extra stuff right now. So I've just marqueed the area that I want it to scan. The image, if you mess up the marquee, you can just delete it like this and correct it. And then we are ready to scan. So when you hit the scan button, it's going to pop up another window where it'll ask you um, what location you'd like it to scan to. And I just have a file selected here. You can hit browse and select your file folder that you want it to go into and I have a folder called scans where all my scans go um, but you can also do this directly to your documents or your pictures um, and then I just have the prefix autoed on whatever they put which is image and then the numbers but you can um, change this if you'd like to. For the image format the type I currently have is TIFF. Um, this is one of the higher quality scans. JPEG is definitely a lower quality um, scan from what I've read so I opt for TIFF you can also scan a PDF in this as well but um, I like to use the TIFF as it has the highest quality um, when you're scanning in the artwork and then all you're gonna do is just hit OK and that's gonna scan in okay so once you scan the file you can just file open in Photoshop and it'll take you to your folders and you can go ahead and find the scan and open it up. Um, you can buy Photoshop I believe on its own but I also have a Photoshop and Lightroom package and I use um, Lightroom quite often to edit my photos for Instagram as well so I have this package um, but you can also just download Photoshop onto your computer. So once you have the file opened up um, we want to take out this background and basically you can just control plus to move in. I'm on Windows right now, by the way um, If you have a Mac the controls will be a little bit different, but you can just Google that if you'd like as you can see we can really see That the background is still in the scan itself. We have a little bit of um, I don't know if that's from my painting or from the scan and you can kind of see the texture of the um, paper itself and any sort of like extra pencil markings and stuff like that are in the scan so basically what we're going to want to do 
is take out this background completely. So the first step we're going to do in order to um, get rid of this background is we're going to right click on the layer over here. Um, I was also going to mention if you wanted to watch a quick YouTube video um, just to go through Photoshop and everything that they offer um, and how to kind of operate it, what the tools mean and everything like that, that might be helpful. Or if you just want to go step by step with me here, um, you can do that as well. I'll try to be as descriptive as possible with what I'm doing. So the next thing we're going to do is duplicate the layer that we currently have. So what you're going to do is you're going to right click on this um, layer called background and click duplicate layer. And then you can just hit OK. And then we have two copies of our image that are exactly the same essentially. Um, the reason why we duplicate it is because we're going to actually add a new layer by using this plus sign right here. So you just click on the plus sign and it'll pop up a new layer. And that layer needs to go beneath or in between um, these two layers. But if you look, um, if I didn't add that copy, when I add a new layer, it actually won't allow me to put it underneath and we want it to be underneath. So that's why we need to um, duplicate this layer. So just right click, duplicate layer, hit OK, and then use the plus sign here to add that extra layer and put it right in between those two. So we're just gonna use this eyeball function right here to turn off that bottom layer because we don't actually need it. It's just sitting there so that we can put a layer beneath this top layer. It's just one of those finicky things in Photoshop. So once we have our new layer, we're gonna make sure it's selected, make sure it's highlighted over here, and we're going to color it in with the paint bucket. And it's just the paint bucket tool over here. And then just make sure the color is set to black. So this, these boxes here are the color picker tools. Just click on those and then I'm not sure what color it defaults in, but say it's this pink color, you can just come down here and grab the black and make sure that that is selected and then hit OK. You can just click anywhere on the layer um, to change the color. If I turn this layer off, you can see this is the layer we're working on right now. This is the one that's highlighted and selected and we're just gonna click on it and it's gonna change it to black. Now this step is essential for editing out the background. So after we've colored in this background layer black, we're going to move up to our background copy. And as you can see, we can't see it even though it's selected because we need to turn this eyeball back on so we can view it. Um, so once we have that and we're on the right layer, we're gonna come back over to our tools over here. And we are going to use the magic eraser tool. So if you right click on your eraser over here, you can see there's three different options for erasers and we are going to be using just the eraser tool itself later. But for now, um, make sure you have the magic eraser um, tool selected to start. And then we are going to use that to edit out the background. So basically the magic eraser tool, if you just highlight over it, it says erases similarly colored areas with a single click. So this is helpful for when we're editing out the background because the background itself is white. So we can use one single click to erase the background versus um, being able to just use the eraser tool. I'll just show you. And we would be erasing it like this, right? And that would take a very long time versus the magic eraser tool, as they say, it's, it's kind of, a single click it's way quicker now the reason why I've changed the layer underneath the layer we're working on to black is purely just so we can see um, any residue on the um, on the image itself so basically we're going to use the magic eraser tool and the magic eraser tool has a tolerance so if you come up here you can change the tolerance to a hundred and that will erase anything that it sees that's black, or sorry, that's white, if you're clicking in the white, right? So I click on the white, and it has gone ahead and erased things that are white in the um, painting itself, which is what we don't want. So with the tolerance really high, it's grabbing anything that looks 
anything close to white and just erasing it. And that's why this process takes a little bit, especially with watercolors. So for example, if you just had like a red heart on this, um, like a fully colored in red heart, and you wanted to erase the background of that, I would turn the tolerance up to 100 and just click the white background and it should all erase. But with watercolor, um, they're very translucent and there's highlights of white in paintings or sometimes you even have white flowers, so you don't want it to take away from your actual painting. So we'll just control Z to undo or you can go edit undo and we're going to try a lower tolerance in order to not have it erase any of our white highlights in the painting itself. So as you can see, when I click, it's not going to take away from our image. However, you can see that when the tolerance isn't up super high, it won't pick up things that are kind of an off white. So this streak here from maybe just a little bit of paint that got onto my paper or maybe some dust particles or something like that aren't erasing fully because um, the tolerance is lower. They might be not a pure white color, so it's not picking it up. So that's where we're going to have to come in with our eraser tool later and just erase these. Um, but for now, I will show you the rest of the magic eraser tool that you can use um, just to get these little sections that were excluded from the um, click that I did earlier, and that's just because they're completely blocked off. So you're just going to go ahead and click on each of these little sections and make sure they're all erased. This is just erasing that actual canvas or watercolor paper that we've scanned it in on, right? And then you can see here, there. this could have been a cat hair, maybe a brush hair or something. You can really see that that was on the scanner glass when I scanned it. And this is exactly what we're trying to remove to make sure that it is just the painting itself, right? So after you've kind of used your magic eraser tool where you want to, we can use the actual eraser tool itself to get some of these little specks out of the painting. So come back over and right click onto your eraser and select the eraser tool. You can change the size of the eraser tool up here and then you can use um, the eraser to start erasing some of these bigger marks on the paper. So um, unfortunately I know my mouse isn't picking up in the screen recording so you can't see where I'm about to click but just hover over any white parts that you see um, there's a big one up here above this bud. You can watch me erase it. You should have a circle come up showing you how large your eraser is and you can just go over um, any little white spots you see with that and just click down and it will erase it. And then also if you wanted to erase um, you know, a whole section you can drag. So just hold down your mouse um, and drag it and it will, oops, I just erase the end of that leaf so I'm just going to control Z and undo but you can just click down and drag it and it will erase the entire section so that's another way to kind of speed up um, the rate that you're erasing or if you wanted to do a whole section you can I find it easier to zoom in on the painting and then you can really see um, where your white spot spots are and then you just click over them and delete them so I start out by using a larger um, size brush to erase some of these larger um, sections. And then once I'm done editing out some of these larger areas, all the little specks of dust or whatever it is on your paper that got into the scan, um, you can turn the size of your brush down. So you just come back up here and turn it down and then you kind of have a smaller brush to work with um, on getting in some of these hard to reach areas and I just like to um, take my time with editing out all of the little white spots I see. Sometimes I'll just put on a podcast and listen to it and just erase. Um, it's important to make sure you erase every single white spot if you're going to put your art on a colored background. For example, this black background, if you were going to place your art onto a black background, um, you can definitely see where you want to take away and just have the art um, and not any of the background in it so that it's nice and crisp. 
So it is fairly time consuming to erase um, this stuff and I find the control Z is a good tool because sometimes I will erase more than I wanted to so just make sure if you end up erasing into your painting that you just undo it and then try again. Um, so yeah, just going around the painting, see I just control Z there, and erasing any of the white spots that you see that aren't a part of your painting. Of course, if your painting is white, you can leave um, those white spots on there, but um, as you can see, the leaf is green and I have this little white spot I'm just going to delete. So just going around um, the remaining um, spots that weren't erased in the magic eraser tool, these will be things that are kind of an off white color that it didn't pick up as being a true white because of the um, transparency of the magic eraser. So if you just want to kind of follow what I'm doing, just erasing little spots, um, you can kind of touch up your artwork too. If you have a little section that you went out of the lines, you can just do this and kind of clean it up a little bit. So this is a good tool to use if you accidentally um, dropped your paintbrush onto the paper or you know you, you, know you went out of the lines. Um, it's a good way to correct it when you're digitizing your artwork. Um, obviously you won't be able to clean that up on the original, but for the purposes of, um, you know, repurposing your work or digitizing it, you can easily, um, kind of edit and make those changes. So that's nice about Photoshop as well. So I'm just going to continue erasing any little white marks I see, and then we will be back to move on to the next step. So as you can see, now we have removed every single white spot on the painting. Um, I have no white around my leaves, I erased all of that. Um, obviously, the more transparent your painting is, the harder it is to um, use that magic eraser function to erase things. Um, but if your painting is really detailed or there's a lot of paint, then it becomes a little bit easier. So. In this case, um, it took a little while to erase everything just because this yellow color is so light um, and in some spots almost white that I couldn't turn the um, tolerance up very high when I was magic erasing. So it did take a little bit of time, but we have our painting now and you can see that it looks very nice on this black background. So the only step left to complete will be to remove any markings off of the painting itself. So this could be things like pencil markings or any dust or fibers that were on the painting itself and not on the background. So the best way to see this is to zoom in. And as you can see, I have some pencil markings here. Personally, I'm not too worried about them. Um, you can really only see them if you're really zoomed in and you can't see them too, too much if um, you're looking at it from a distance. So. I'm not going to go into all of those details, but what I am going to do is just zoom in really close on this mark right here. Actually, I'll just back up a little bit so it's not pixelated. So as you can see, this little speck is um, not supposed to be there. It's kind of in the middle of my petal and it's maybe um, a pencil mark or uh, an eraser dust fiber. Um, so the best way to go about deleting these without removing um, the painting itself is to use something called the clone stamp tool. So if you go over to our tools again and hover over the clone stamp tool, basically it says it paints with pixels from another part of the image. So you're going to want to hover over a part of the image that looks similar to the color that you want to replace the section with. So in this case, holding down the Alt button and clicking on an area that is similar color to what I want to cover up. So as you can see, I'm just going to click over it and it has disappeared. It looks the same color as that color around it. If I use this color up here, you can see that it doesn't match. So you wanna be sure that if you're going to be covering something up that you're Alt clicking from the same area um, that you want to cover up. There are some tutorials on YouTube that go more in depth about the clone stamp tool, 
um, but this is what I like to use for erasing some of these little um, particles on my painting itself. So see how this is darker now? We need to do a new alt click, so I'm going to hold down the alt key and click here, and then I'm going to hover over the spec and click again. Now that mark has disappeared. So if you want to go over your painting, um, I usually, I don't usually zoom in quite this much. It's not really necessary. Um, when you look at it in person, you honestly can't see it that well. Um, so I usually go just to where like the human eye would be able to see, maybe about here, and um, go through and see if there's anything um, where I've made a mistake or anything I want to correct or just getting rid of pencil markings or fibers or anything like that. So once you've completed that, um, and you're happy with your painting where it is, we are ready to save it. So what we're going to do is now we can remove this background. So we're going to deselect the eye from layer one, and then you can see it's just on a blank background. There's nothing underneath of it. So at this point, we can go over to File and Save As or Control Shift S, and then you can see that the drop down the save as type is default to photoshop um, in the psd document but you can drop down that list and you have a bunch of options there you just want to select png once that's selected you can name your file i'm just going to name it edited and then you can hit save and then it's going to bring up a pop-up for png format options and i'm going to go with the smallest file size I don't like working with larger file sizes because they are slower to open and they take longer to um, send or sometimes they don't even send in an email at all. So I like the smallest file size and the slowest saving. That just means it's going to take a little bit longer, but that's okay. We're going to hit OK and wait for that to save. It'll just take a few seconds. Now the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to size your documents. So this will be if you want to make 8x10 prints um, or any size print you want to. I'm going to use the example 8x10 and I'll show you how to create a brand new um, sheet and how to add your artwork over top of it and center it and everything like that. So once that file is saved, we can go ahead and hit File New. And then you can use the preset details here. I'm using inches and I'm using eight by 10. So eight inches by 10 inches. And the resolution is 300 pixels per inch. And then hit create. Once you have your canvas, just exit out of our old document. We don't need to save the Photoshop document itself unless you feel like you need to go back to that for any reason and we will open the new document. So file open and we will find our file called edited and that's going to open up in a separate tab. So what we're going to do is drag our layer one from the edited document over into the untitled document, our 8x10 canvas, and you can just drop that right on top of the um, page. As you can see, this layer has dropped on top of the background, which means obviously that our art is on top of the white background. Something you can do with the background at this time is you could use the paint bucket and change the color of the background. If you wanted to make this be on a pink background, you could just drop the paint bucket behind it. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to put it on a blank background. So just a white background. So I'll need to go back and select my layer. And then I use Control T, and this is the transform tool. And this allows you to resize your art so you can make it smaller and bigger and center it on the page. So I'm just going to do a size that I think would look good as an 8x10 art print. So I'm just going to drop that there, and then I'm going to hit the checkbox up top. And then I have my art on an 8x10 canvas, all sized and ready to go. So now I will save as the document as a JPEG with the background in it. And I'm just going to call this 8x10 and hit save. Then it will ask you what you want for JPEG options. I just leave it as is at the highest quality and hit OK. And then that will save. So the last thing I'm going to be showing you is how to use a mockup. So if you go into Etsy and type in frame mockup, there's lots of options available. 
and when you purchase it, it will give you a guide on how to download the Photoshop document to your computer. Once you have that downloaded to your computer, you can file and open. And as you can see, I have a folder for all of my mock-ups that I've purchased. And I'm just going to select one of the mock-ups, so I'll just click this one here. And when it opens up, you can see on the right hand side, there are three layers. For these mock-ups specifically, they were really nice at laying out um, where your artwork should go. In others that I've seen, it doesn't always say your artwork here, but the way that you can tell where your artwork should go is if there's a smart object. So if you look on the your artwork here and hover over the um, little icon, it will show you smart object thumbnail. So. The smart objects are what allows you to put your art into the mock-up. So all you have to do is hover over the icon and just make sure you're over that smart object icon and double click and it will open your new layer um, for you to add your artwork on top of. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to exit out of these other documents right now and I am going to file open our document that we saved as the JPEG, so the eight by 10. So again, as we did with the other file, we're just going to drop it over the background. And then as you can see, it's very large, so I'm going to zoom out really far and hit Control T to transform it and shrink it down to the right size. And then I'll just zoom back in here so I can get the sizing right. And then you're just going to drag it. And you're going to drag it until it gets to a size that looks right. Um, it's not going to be exact and that's okay. This isn't the product that we're selling so it doesn't need to be the exact same size as what your print is. As long as your eight by 10 document is sized right and it's centered nicely, that's all that matters. This is just to display your artwork, to show others what it could look like framed. So I wouldn't worry too much about it not fitting exactly. So once we have centered the um, JPEG over the smart object, we're going to hit Control S and that will save it. Once you've hit Control S, it's saved. And as you can see, you go back into the mock-up and your artwork is in the frame. So at this point, I just like to file save as, and I save my mock-ups as a JPEG because um, they're just an image. And when I'm listing my artwork on, when I used to list it on Etsy or on um, my website, it usually asks for a JPEG format for your listing photos, so that's what I like to save it as. And then once that's saved, you can just go into your documents and find the finished product. I hope you enjoyed this video and learning how to get your artwork from paper into scanning it, digitizing it, sizing it, and even getting it into a mock-up. Please let me know if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comment section. Um, chances are if you have a question, somebody else also has that question, so it would be helpful to put the answers there to share with everybody. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in my next video.